Camaraderie is built in many different ways. Every day we witness these unique bonds. The camaraderie of a firehouse illustrates a strong bond between guys that come from all walks of life, have different personalities, and live together 24 hours a day. A firehouse is a supersized family atmosphere. I was everybody's friend and I was treated like family and that's something that the firehouse really kind of embodies in itself is that everybody cares for one another no matter who it is. I don't care if it's your first day on the job or if you're 75 year, years old and still kicking. It's just something about it. It's, it's like a brotherhood and it's just something that I felt a part of just because my dad felt a part of it as well. That camaraderie translates onto the baseball diamond. When Brandon and his dad visited the University of Richmond, he immediately felt a unique bond. Coach Woodson conveyed a unified message, reminding him of the firehouse atmosphere and that family. You spend every single day with, with these guys, and again, no matter if it's the freshman who just showed up on campus or a senior, if somebody needs your help, you're going to be there for, like, for them. And um, It's just something that was in the firehouse, and now it's here, and it's something that I look forward to for the rest of my life because you have family established for the rest of your life now. On September 11th, 2001, the world stood still. 2,996 people lost their lives that day, including 343 firefighters. 15 years later, we continue to honor those who perished, the first responders, and the events that changed our nation's history. Johnson's father was a New York City firefighter at Engine 96 and Ladder 54 in the Bronx. I had left the firehouse and was driving home when I heard the news on the radio. I was a few minutes from home, so I pulled into the driveway and noticed our neighbor and close friend, Lieutenant Glenn Perry's car, wasn't there. I turned on the news, packed for a few days, wrote a note for my family, and was on my way back to the Bronx. I have like a couple pictures in my head. I don't really have a lot of like moving images in, in my head from it. Um, but it was just, there, there was like something, it was just panic. It was just something weird going on. Us kids at the time, we didn't really understand. It wasn't on the televisions or anything, but all the teachers went out of the room and we were just kind of sitting in the room alone. And we just didn't really know what to think of it. I mean, I was five or six year, year, like years old at the time. And there was just something weird going on. My grandma picked me up from school, my, my brother and I both. Um, and again, she was just kind of weird. She didn't really tell us a whole lot. It's just, again, it's just everybody was so like frightened and scared. In the wake of the tragedy, while we tried to understand what happened, the nation came together to stand as one. The outpouring of love and support for the rescue workers and our families were appreciated beyond belief. Many young school children sent cards and drawings to firehouses, many of which are still displayed in firehouses across New York City. Something that I think what really shows how strong the country was together after that was everybody pulled together so, so close after that. I remember writing notes to all the firemen in, in like in elementary school and writing them thank you and I was thinking I was like maybe this is going to go to my father like I, I don't know I don't know if it ever did probably not but I just remember the the outpour of love and emotion that everybody the entire country showed for what happened was was truly amazing There's multiple times where I, I sit and I think and you could easily just imagine my dad being on on call that morning you know I mean just because I I know him being who he is he would I mean a hundred percent be the first person in there just because that, that that's who, who he is he loved being a firefighter loved it he still wants me to be a firefighter it's just I don't know like I don't really know how to describe it because I, I know he wouldn't be here today if if he was on on call that day and that makes me sad but it, I'm thankful that that didn't happen and he was coming home when that did, did happen. But, you know, being six or seven and him not being home for a week, a week and a half, and your mom trying to describe to you what happened and why he's not home, is, it was rough. It, it, it really was. Um, it was just something that I hope nobody has to go through. Um, I hope the country doesn't have to go through something like that again. That's just so traumatic. But again, he, he loved every single second of, of, of that job and he would 100% go back if he could. As Sunday approaches and marks the 15th anniversary of the tragic events of September 11th, we stop and remember. We stop and think about those victims and their families. We must never forget.